Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. First of all, Happy New Year. I know we're already toward the end of January, but this is our first episode of Projections mm -hmm. yep. for this year. Um, Good way to kick it off. Yeah, unfortunately we weren't at CES this year where there were a bunch of virtual reality announcements, but we were fortunate enough to go to HUC's offices here in San Francisco, right in our backyard, so that we could get our hands on and try on their new Vive Pro headset. Mm -hmm. It's it right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yep. probably the biggest uh, VR announcement at CES. And out of nowhere. I mm -hmm. mean, nobody saw, expected this coming, especially with Oculus saying they wouldn't have any new headset for the entirety of 2018. Here we are in, in January, and we've got uh, a brand new Vive. Right. And it makes a lot of sense. You know, Oculus, which is owned by Facebook, they want to get headsets to as many people as possible. They're invested in their platform. They mm -hmm. have all the money. Uh, HTC, traditionally phone company, now in the VR, uh, they kind of need to release hardware products every year to, to keep the business going. Last year you had the Vive trackers mm -hmm. and you also had the deluxe audio headset, which we liked very much. Yep. And they took <laughs> some of those lessons, the improved audio, the improved ergonomics, and now have a new product coming out in the first quarter of this year um, that also has, what a lot of people are asking for, an improved display. That's the thing, isn't it? That's the biggest change, is the new higher resolution, which is equivalent to the Samsung Odyssey, that mixed reality headset, which is the top tier of the Windows mixed reality headsets. We have that same resolution inside of a Vive. Right, which is between two eyes, 2880 by 1600. If you compare that with what you got on these first generation Vive and Rifts, mm -hmm. uh, which came out in 2016, believe it or not, those were 2160 by 1200, again, split in two. And of course, since then, we've had the Windows Mixed Reality headsets, 1440 by 1440. Increased resolution. We're not still quite at 4K in terms of mass market right. yet, but we're inching ever closer. We're almost at 3K, 2880 across two eyes. But the resolution really doesn't mean a lot by itself because there are different types of panels and also different types of optics. Um, and so we got a chance to use this. Uh, they put us in the Steam Home environment with the menu, looking at some text. And uh, what do you think of the resolution? Because people want to know. Well, that's, a, that's the great thing. And, and the resolution is, is really a great improvement. I mean, when you're looking at text in particular, and not just right up close to your face, but actually text that is further away, right. that is now legible. And, and it's actually much more comfortable to read text at any distance. Normally, when you're in VR and you're reading anything, you can see pixels, no question. Um, now, it, while you can still see pixels, I wouldn't say that there isn't a screen door effect, so to speak. Um, it is much more comfortable. I, I felt like I could read, um, you know, without, without straining my eyes in any way, shape, or form. Now, that said, the sweet spot of focus is still about the same. Yeah, yeah. So, so you have an area of focus which is, which is well focused, and then as you go away from that into your peripheral vision, it becomes less and more and more blurry. I mean, the optics look visually almost the same. You can see the telltale Fresnel right. lines. And so I believe, even if they've modified the optics, it's a variant of the same thing, yeah. which has its pros and cons. The hybrid optics on the rips were famous for having these ghosting effects on very dark scenes. Uh, this, you see, you might have noticed some, a little bit of that, that ghosting as well. Well, I, I noticed a little ghosting. I certainly noticed the god rays. They're, god rays, they're still there. Um, and in fact, I would say the god rays are almost accentuated because everything is accentuated. There are more pixels on here. It, it feels brighter in some respects. So just as the, the area of focus is more intense, as you go away from that, there are more pixels giving you the god rays effect, and they become more accentuated too. Um, as far as keeping text in focus, if you're reading a paragraph, I found it was easier for me to literally move my head more to keep the text in focus instead of just moving my eyes, which is a, you know, something you probably just get used to. And I think you made a really good point about the type of text that people are reading in virtual reality games. It's not just about having a virtual piece of paper and holding it up close to your face. Most of that, developers are still going to be using really relatively large yes, please and, keep and doing serifed that. text that you can mm -hmm. actually see the details on. It's about things that are far away. Mm -hmm. So if we were standing in our environment, our test environment, maybe five or six feet from where the Steam Home menu was, you could read that paragraph description sure. pretty comfortably with this. And in a game like Space Pirate Train, or something you pointed out was like, the, the advertisement graphics that were projected far away Just from where your play area is. Background dressing. Background yeah. dressing looked 
so much better. Oh yeah, no, it looked absolutely crisp. And in fact, it's interesting, and now that we have the higher resolution, it's gonna start bringing out some of the low resolution aspects of things that people have assumed you wouldn't notice. Yes, not um, only in textures, but also in the geometry. Right. Which, is, it's, it's good, it's clarity but it also means that you're gonna to need to step up the rendering as well. That's it, so this, I mean, if you're gonna get the exact same frame rate, you might need a slightly higher power graphics card, yeah. which unfortunately right now is not something you're gonna be able to buy for a reasonable price. Thanks, cryptocurrency miners. <laughs> However, you can't, help, you can't buy this yet at yes. all. Right. So maybe, fingers crossed, by the time this comes out, uh, cryptocurrency miners will have gone out of business. Now, do you feel like they should have went even further? Because having chatted with some of the product managers here, they're clearly targeting this for the high end. They're being very careful with their wording, talking about how design of this headset was informed by conversations with professionals. You know, the B2B business, right. BMW designing cars and, and graphic artists and, and modeling programs, not necessarily the mass market gamer, which tells me this is not a mass market device. It's not gonna be, you know, $300. That's it, like it tells me the price is not going to be as low as I want. Right. Um, I'm hoping for something around the $500 price range, uh, but you know, who knows? I mean, the Vive has traditionally been the more expensive product. Mm -hmm. um, and this having the pro label on it, um, if you're talking about price, I mean, I would expect them to start high and then come down as they did with the original uh, uh, Vive. It also feels like HUC is going with this modular upgrade system. Just like last year, you could buy the trackers and you could buy the Lux Audio headset mm -hmm. to work with your existing Vive. You could buy just this headset and if you don't need the base stations, if you don't need the, the one controllers mm -hmm. and use your existing hardware uh, as a step up. I feel like that's the gamer skew. Like, because that, the gamers don't really need a much larger tracking volume. Right. Later on down the line, when the new lighthouses come out, they're calling uh, base stations is the official term, uh, that have uh, compatibility with the new trackers, mm -hmm. then you'll be able to do much larger tracking volumes. In 10 fact, meter by 10 meter. Yeah, and you'll need four base stations in order to accomplish that. Yeah. And I think that's where we're gonna start seeing the pro you know, term put to effect, because it really is a product that they've developed for the professionals, people who are designing cars and they want to actually walk around an entire room and see a life-size car that they can walk around without having to teleport. Which gives me some hope for things they might do down the line in terms of maybe releasing new input mechanisms, right? The, the Knuckles controllers is a big question. Why, is, why did they show this at CES with just your wands? Mm -hmm. And it makes sense if they're gonna launch this first with the headset, then with the headset with the new base stations, right. and then maybe down the line another accessory. It is all going into HTC needing to release new hardware every year to keep their VR business sustainable. I was just gonna say, they did say they would release new wands. However, they're gonna be the exact same form factor. They'll just incorporate the newer sensors like this to be compatible with the new base stations. Yes, as well as a new uh, Vive tracker, right. which will also have uh, compatibility with the new base stations with the new trackers. It is a nice blue color, you know, it's a different, different uh, mm -hmm. skew. They're not calling this a prototype, uh, but this is a, a near final pre-production mm -hmm. unit. So and I, I the new like wands. Close. The new wands will also be blue. Yeah. Something they haven't talked about is uh, what the two cameras are gonna do, mm. right? It, it makes so much sense to have some type of stereo imaging in the front or have some type of inside out tracking if, if you have two cameras here. Um, you know, people have supposed that might be an inside out play. I don't think so. That's yeah. my assumption. They, they won't talk to us about this at all. They said in the coming weeks, in the very near future, we'll know more. They have some experiences that they've lined up with developers to show this off. I think they have too much invested in the Lighthouse technology to, to go for that, personally. I think it's more of a, some sort of stereo uh, you know, imaging, and I'm hoping it is a wider field of view than the original camera. That was what held that one back for me so much. Right, if you uh, use the original camera, it was either used to accentuate the chaperone system with an outline of objects in your room, or give you a, little, a small window right. into the world. So I would hope that if this gives you a window into the world to have some type of pass-through augmented reality mm -hmm. system, which I would love, that one to be wider field of view, but maybe also higher fidelity, because again, HTC, they make cell phones, they make cameras, and their smartphones have nice cameras in them. They also have microphones in them, and there are two microphones on this for noise cancellation. Yeah, in fact, there's internal hardware that does that cancellation for you, so the developers just get that for free. I think that's pretty yeah. cool. Yep, there's also improved audio. We were able to play Space Pirate Trainer with the audio. It gets loud. The amps here are pretty nice. Um, they have internal amplifiers to boost the signal for that. Yes, uh, but I don't think there's any new sound processing in right. terms of hardware. <laughs> they are confirmed to be working on something of SDK for spatial audio that'll be giving developers, and then that would then pass also to the first generation. 
and live headsets. They are also detachable. You need a screwdriver to remove the headphones, and then you can use your own headphones or earbuds with a jack that's on the device. Yeah, there's oh. a lot of streamlining too. The, the cable that yeah. plugs into here, it's one cable. It's actually, if you look at the other end, it's no longer power USB and HDMI. It's a proprietary cable. On the breakout back box, you do have power USB and HDMI. From the computer from and from the, the wall. Computer. Uh, but I like that this is one cable. It doesn't feel like it's any less twisty, uh, but of course they're moving toward a wireless play anyway. Yeah, that's super cool. And uh, assumedly the wireless device will plug right into that yep. with another single cable. Yeah. The no one we talked to could answer whether this has an extra USB port inside. And I don't want to break it open to break it. I think so it. few people used that on the original Vive. It was a Kickstarter, right? Put a fan on, on, on the right. your headset. Yeah, I mean, it's a power jack, essentially. Yeah. Right. Um, but I guess maybe they just knew, it hasn't been too much thought about that. Uh, now, the, the breakout box that this plugs into does have a power button now. Yes. Which I think that's kind of interesting because if you're not using this, um, oftentimes it's just on and it's warm. Uh, for instance, with the Oculus Rift, in order to shut that down, you actually have to close the software. You have to close the Oculus software. Well, um, warm helps with a little bit of defogging, but well, also that's can true. attract bugs. That's true. But if you just want to shut it down, nice little power button, and a lot like the PSVR. Yeah. Uh, Ergonomic-wise, we thought it was very comfortable. It, uh, the Vive Pro Del or Deluxe Audio headset mm -hmm. added some weight to the original Vive. Sure. And if you do, we did a side-by-side -side comparison. This feels a little bit lighter, though not, it's not a world-changing amount of lightness. Uh, it still is you know, a he plastic headset that you're putting on your head. Right. Distribution of weight is good. Uh, like with the Pro Deluxe audio headset, it doesn't go all the way to the back of your head to cup it. And it's soft foam pads. Um, you have a little bit of that fake leather on um, the headphones. And uh, for at least our demo, they were using VR cover. So we have had some experience with what the shipping facial interface. I felt like. like the light leakage around the nose was a little more yeah. isolated. Yes, now, this gasket overlapping. The Vive has always been more isolated than the Rift in that respect. But this is even more so. It really covered it. There's a little bit there, but almost completely isolated. Mm -hmm. You also have IPD adjustment here, mm -hmm. um, mechanical adjustment as well as a new button here, uh, which lets you move the whole headset forward and back. Yeah, you could do that on the original Vive, but most people never knew how. You have to pull your sides out and then twist them, push them back in, and it felt like you really had to use a lot of force. Yeah, uh, but we're excited for this to come out. Q1 is what they're saying. Yeah. GEC is right around the corner in March, and we want to see what developers have been doing with this, especially what they're doing with yeah. the camera upgrade. Like, if, if you're right, if they are doing some sort of slam with that, to do some rudimentary geometry detection, that would be pretty neat. That'd be super cool, especially with a potential use area of 10 meter by 10 meter, mm -hmm. right? We're excited there are new headsets coming out. And not just ones that are backed on Kickstarter, but some things that's gonna be supported by big companies and are gonna reach enthusiasts. And it's not gonna break the old systems. The old Vives are gonna work just fine. Yeah. Uh, your Windows Mixed Reality headsets will still work with Steam Beta, but hopefully this will get uh, satisfy some of our cravings for a higher quality experience, because um, it's been two years. Yeah, and we'll be trying the wireless adapter as soon as possible, hopefully in the next few weeks. Cool, so we have another full year of projections for you. If you're working on VR experiences, games, or even hardware, please get in touch. Send us an email or put a comment in the comment section below, because we want to check your stuff out. There's a whole lot of VR. I'm excited for the year. Oh, me too. This is, this is going to be a very good year for VR. I just know it. I know it. Wireless. I said that last year, but I really <laughs> know it now. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.